Isn't this nice, everyone? We get to talk about some positive injury news because some good updates have come through from Mikhail Arteta um, ahead of the Preston game. Of course, the Carabao Cup game is on Wednesday night. We'll be reacting to it on AFTV, so go make sure you're subscribed to the channel uh, to yeah catch our live watch along and reaction to the Preston Carabao Cup game. But let's talk about the injury news because Arteta's given us good updates on Gabriel. Durian Timber, uh, Ricardo Calafiori. Well, that's not the best of news, but we'll talk about him in a second. His knee injury that, of course, kept out for the Liverpool game. And we'll talk about Martin Erdogan too. So four players to get into there. But I think the big thing and a lot of the narrative coming out of the Arsenal-Liverpool game, especially for Arsenal fans, was, OK, to talk about referees, we get that. Uh, but a lot of people, including me, I have to say, theorised that if Gabriel and Timber had stayed on that pitch against Liverpool, we would have or would have certainly had a better chance of winning the game. I certainly believe that. I felt that we were in a good position. It was a real shame when we lost them, especially because Gabriel is a player who doesn't go off injured often. You know, he might sort of need the odd treatment here and there. He's always in the wars. He doesn't shy away from the physical side of the game. But he very, very rarely has to come off injured. He very rarely misses a game or a spell through injury. But this is what happened. He had to come off. He had to nurse this injury, um, which... Mikel Arteta has now told us, in fact, we'll give you his exact words. He says, we're still assessing him. It doesn't look bad at all. It was much better the next day. He has done some tests. Now, that's great. He came off feeling his knee. He actually came off, got some treatment, came back on, and then realised he couldn't finish the game. We played the better half of 30 to 40 minutes, well, the better side of 30 to 40 minutes without Gabriel on that pitch. Now, they thought it was a knee problem. Doesn't look like it's too serious. Just to repeat the quote one more time. They are still assessing him. They are still you know, still seeing what's going on. But he says it doesn't look bad at all. And I think, I think there's a difference between saying he's doing okay, we're sure it's not serious. And it's another thing saying it doesn't look bad at all. I mean, he's almost saying, look, sometimes players just get kicked or there's knocks or there's certain things that you feel at pretty much any level of sport or exercise, right? And those things can pass very quickly. And it looks like Gabriel Magalhaes might have had just something of that ilk when it comes to that particular injury. Now, I wasn't expecting him to play against Preston, especially when you've got Kivior and OK, Calafiori's not there now, but, you know, especially when you've got quite a few players that can play left centre-back. Um, so I don't think Gabriel was ever in contention to play the Preston game, nor will he play. And even if he was in contention, he probably wouldn't be now because they still, you know, as Arteta said, want to assess him. It's Tuesday. The, the game's in just over 24 hours. There'd be no need to kind of thrust him into a game where you know you're still assessing him checking his knees okay but the bigger picture is that there's Newcastle away on the weekend followed by Inter followed by Chelsea you don't want to take any risks and we've got enough depth you would think to go out there and get the job done against Preston because I'm not overlooking that game I mean I think I want silverware I think this Arsenal team is good enough for silverware and you know that's why I play significance on yes with all due respect to Preston you know a side that aren't in the Premier League that we are expected to be. I don't want us to take it lightly. I want us to go get the job done, but not at the expense of playing Gabriel if he's not 100% sure when well, we've got that run of games as well. So it's a fine balance, but I think not playing Gabriel is quite clearly the the right choice for the game on Wednesday. On the other players, Durian Timber. So the quote from Arteta is, Durian is fine. He's been out for a while. He was tired. He could not continue the game. Yeah, it looked like a cramp, didn't it? I mean, the way they were trying to treat him, some of the players and the staff, it, it looked like it was a, a cramp issue, which makes complete sense. I mean, people need to realise that Timber's Arsenal career has been very, very stop-start. You know, he really did arrive, and then suddenly he was our starting left-back out of nowhere, and it was like, OK, brilliant, we've, we're moving beyond Zinchenko. And then he got injured, you know, played the Community Shield, really intense game, even though it was the Community Shield, you know, he... he he was put to work in that game, wasn't he? I think he came off in that game for Kieran Tierney, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he then starts the first hour of Premier League action last season, gets this ACL, MCL, all sorts of injuries to his knee, bless him. Comes back to play like the last 30 minutes against Everton on the final day. Um, and that was it. That's all we got of Duran Timber last season. So he's coming to this summer, having you know started pre-season, played against Man United and against Bournemouth. Then we didn't see him for the rest of pre-season, which included a game against Liverpool, which included two games at the Emirates. And then suddenly he's coming on against Wolves on the opening day in the 2-0 win, and he's starting away at Villa. And you're thinking, OK, so what's going on here? I mean, he's sort of having bits of... Yeah. There's this thing with Duran Timber where he's sort of out... Obviously, he was out for a long time last season. But Arteta seems to really love the player to a point where once he's fit, he will use him. You know, like I said, starting against Villa, even though kind of the first football he'd played really since early pre-season was that Wolves game. And you get what I'm trying to say. 
But then when he was out, you know, missing Southampton, missing Shakhtar, missing Bournemouth, missing the international break with the Netherlands, you know, he was straight into the starting eleven for Liverpool uh, to the point where, you know, tiredness, fatigue, cramp and all that saw him come off the pitch. So I would expect, again, he doesn't play this game against Preston. It wouldn't make sense to play him against Preston. Um, but again, give him the full week to rest and recover and then play him on Saturday at midday against Newcastle, which again, we will be covering here on AFTV. I just feel like, it's so interesting that when he does have these issues which might occur, I think Arteta's warned us that, you know, there might be a little bit of stop-start uh, with the season Timber has. It's interesting that though when he is fit, Arteta wants to get him on that pitch because because he's a brilliant player. Right back, left back, whatever it is, you know, he feels he needs to get... I mean, you got to think, right, that game against Liverpool, he didn't have to start with Timber left back. You know, he could easily have made the tweaks he made and gone with Kivior at left back or Zinchenko left back. Now, I know we were dealing with Mo Salah, so Timber was always the best choice. But if you talk about managing his minutes and, you know, being wary of playing him too much, you can understand the argument for not starting with that game. But quite clear that the minute he was fit and available, he went, I've got to get him in this team, especially for that Liverpool game. And uh, I thought Timber did really, really well from a defensive perspective against Salah as well. Now, two other players to talk about, Calafiore and Erdogan. Let's start with let's start with the bad news and on the good news. So the bad news of the Calafiore out is that he's out for a few, or the Calafiore front is that he's out for a few weeks. Apologies, everyone, I'm a bit ill. You can probably hear it in my voice. So sorry that I'm stumbling on some of the words. Um, Calafiore is out for a few weeks. I saw some people presenting this as good news. I mean, it you know, yes, it's not months. And I guess we should be thankful for that. Um, but it's not great. You know, hopefully it means he maybe not doesn't play till the international break and then misses the international break. I mean, that would be ideally what we want here. So he gets a proper break and he could come back. Um, it's just such a shame that this is kind of the second potential knee injury of the season. Of course, he bounced back very quickly from whoever bothered him against Leicester because he then started the week after against, I think it was PSG. But then, uh, but then you know, now this, you know, the way he's landed against Shakhtar has now meant that he had to miss the Liverpool game. And you've got to think, if he's playing that Liverpool game, it's probably a different midfield. It's probably a different, you know, back for ending the, uh, end or starting the game and ending the game. The reason I say different midfield is because Partey probably would have played, you know, in midfield instead of right back. And, I don't know, you, you wonder, eh? It's these little moments that can have, you know, a bigger impact on the season. Um, but with Timber fit now, the timing's probably OK. Well, no, I say that. You want Calafiore fit for these games. We're about to go to Newcastle, into Chelsea. You want Calafiore available. So it's a real shame. I think what Calafiore was doing was he was giving us that profile of left, of, of centre-back at full-back, whilst giving us a lot of guard and drive on the ball and doing things as an inverting player that I don't think anyone's done quite as well since Zinchenko did it at his best in the 22-23 campaign. So, yeah, it's a shame, but, yeah, only a few weeks. Hopefully we have him back soon. Uh, but, like we said, Kivior, Zinchenko, Lewis Skelly is playing really well when he's been called upon. And, of course, during Timber fit now too. So we should be absolutely fine with that area of the pitch. What's the latest on Tommy Asu? In fact, I can have a quick look to see if anything comes up. Uh, in fact, yeah, what we're talking about defence, Tommy Asu, anything from Arteta? Just have a quick look. Um, no, nothing I can see. Nothing I can see on Tommy Asu. Okay, uh, on Erdegaard then. Um, Erdegaard's on the grass, he's running. He's, uh, yeah, he's doing some training, but according to Mikhail Tetris, his exact quote was, you know, there's some boxes to tick. Basically, when you're making these recoveries, you've got to be able to cross certain physical hurdles, and they're waiting to see if Erdegaard is quite ready yet. He's hopeful that it'll be before the next international break that would be fantastic um but let's wait and see i think you know some people say we haven't coped well without Erdogan. some say we've co coped better than we thought i think pre-international break we were coping brilliantly since then you can see the way Havertz has been used drifting out into those pockets that Erdogan would be in it does feel a little bit like i don't know it feels a little bit like um We've not really had a like for like, and Waneri feels the closest, and we, you know, Arteta has been very reluctant to use him there, and therefore now it's feeling more than ever like we're really missing Martin Erdegaard, especially in some games like Shakhtar Bournemouth. From a creativity perspective, we were certainly missing him. So let's hope we get him back soon. Um, if I'm to make a prediction, I think he could be okay for Chelsea because we're talking about before the next international break, right? But and I think I heard the Norway manager saying, say something like, you know, we hope to have him for the next round of games. I mean, just. Please don't touch him. You know, like, you know, we're the ones who've been having to look after him and nurse him. I know Martin Erdogan probably wants to play. I get that. But it's like, 
he's if he's only just making it back, he's only getting a handful of minutes, maybe the maybe one start before the international break again for Arsenal. Um, I don't think he should be like shooting off playing a load of sort of you know important intense games, you know, international level. But that's the selfish person. I mean, I'm sure Norwegian Arsenal fans are watching this going, James, we hear you, but we want him playing for us too, and I get that too. But yeah, hopefully we've seen him before the international break. He's out on the grass, he's running, but yeah, still a few things to check before uh, he can be in an Arsenal shirt trying to guide us on this, uh, you know, what's the word? Quest to claw back these points that we found ourselves behind Liverpool and, and City with. But anyway, Let's see. Everyone, those have been the positive injury updates. Gabriel Bagla is still being assessed, but it's not looking bad at all. <laughs> Couldn't even get through that without whatever that was, losing my voice. So it doesn't look bad at all, according to Mikel Arteta. That's quote marks, um, which is good on Gabriel. Timber uh, is fine. Calafiore is out for a few weeks. And Erdegaard hopefully will be back for the international break. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Good injury news. Um, is there anyone else there that... Has been mentioned Tommy Asu, we've touched on him, but we don't really know much more. Anyway, catch you all in a bit.